Welcome back, Profit Takers. It's Victoria here. And today we're going to go over, you know, what's setting up for, you know, the first of the month for October. Um, now, today we had, you know, a great pump, actually a dump and pump for the Dow. Um, this was one of the trades that I took today. Absolutely phenomenal trade. Um, so I, I'm trading the New York session. So one of the first things, you know, that I look at, of course, the, the dashboard is showing that it, you know, right now it's showing um, that it has confirmed as a peak high, right? And the way we do that, obviously here we have the, the previous day level on Friday, right? We broke out on Friday and it failed. However, it did close and break out. Right. So I know that anytime uh, a market closes and break out long, right, um, that's usually going to equal a dump and pump. All right. And that's exactly what we got at the New York Open. Um, so I'm going to go. Actually, this is M15, but I'm going to go to M5 so you can see. All right. So here is when the market uh, New York market open. Obviously we're looking, you know, we got the lower lows inside and that's exactly what we're looking for because we want this market to drop. Okay. That's exactly what we want. So I get really excited when I see that. And now I'm taking notice of the higher high that's inside of the, the drop, right? Because that's going to be a target of mine. And also, um, the closing prices is, is also a target, or you can just use the area from where, um, the dump began, right, as a target, right? And I'm just really just trying to get better at um, executing these trades um, on time. Sometimes my timing can be a little bit off, but I'm starting to really love Mondays, okay? <laughs> because the low of day and high of day are just so easy. And it's been super easy like that with, with gold for the last few weeks of uh, September. And I'm wondering if it's going to you know, continue like that. But for, for the Dow guys, what else did I do, um, that you, it's important for you to do? Obviously, um, we already had the previous day low level here. It had already broke out of the previous day level. Right. And so once it did that, you know, now you're looking for the reversal. Okay. Um, at the low of day, cause it's the first, it is the actual low of day, right. Um, the new low of day rather, because this was maybe you can call that a low, I don't know. But um it reversed right at nine o'clock on the dot. Okay, let me go back down to a smaller time frame. So once it started to so that's uh 9.50, sorry, 8.50, and then 8.55, we get the pin hammer. And then right at nine o'clock, because I usually like to wait, right? We I always I draw, I would draw this um right when it gets above, right when it gets above this level, the previous day level, right? You can you can feel totally comfortable entering in. However, I went in a little bit earlier because I already felt like you know it was already confirming. Let me go down to M1. Another thing, guys, once you find the trade that you're gonna take. Um, shut everything else down. Or maybe there's another trade that you want to take, right? Maybe there's another one. Who knows? Now that we're on M1, you can even see this little area, right? Even more clear, right? You can pick any one of these, but we'll just pick that one. Okay. And you could have gotten in at any one of these. Once it hit that, that pin, once that pin happened right at nine o'clock, that's all. It's like right at nine o'clock. This fourteen hundred time is is nine o'clock for me, which is ten o'clock Eastern time, and that is right when you can get into this trade, and then you can just ride this thing. And then, of course, you know <laughs> it's going to uh, you know consolidate a little bit, right? And at this point, boom, you're in, right? You can add to the position here, and then just take everything off. Um, 
you know, at the closing price level. Or if you are going to measure this, you can measure it from the inside right there. Let me go to M5. All right, you can measure it from the inside of that higher high there to the low of day. And that will also pretty much take you out um, right where I was suggesting, right? Low of day or right underneath the body. That's another thing that I like to do. All right, it will take you out. So that was an easy um, nail and bell trade, if you will. And after that, guys, you just, you have to know how to be done, right? And that's something that I struggled with for years, <laughs> knowing when to be done, right? Because it is Monday. It's the open range of the week. So, you know, we had news. We had Fed at one o'clock. So was there really anything else to do here today? Not really. Okay. So now um, the Dow looks like it's confirming, right? It might reset. Okay. Cause again, it closed in breakout. So this peak formation low that broke the low, this could totally like, <laughs> this could totally just go opposite direction tomorrow. Right. We can continue to go higher. Um, but we're just going to wait and see, um, to see if this is actually going to hold because yeah, we did, we did break out. And, you know, once we break the level, right, we now have, you know, a peak high and a peak low, right. We should be able to see, um, and it's, and it closed as, let's see, this would be once the market opens, actually, well, this market isn't open, right? So it should actually it is. Oh, it is open. Okay. I didn't see it moving. So once the line starts to draw the Closing price should be right there. So that is below the open. That is a first red signal, right? Um, and we have some confirmation here. But again, I would wait before we go trying to say tomorrow is going to be an official first red day because we're going to um, have to see how the markets play out. And I'm not looking at, I didn't write down what news we have tomorrow. I haven't written that down yet, but. Um, whatever time news plays out. And just note that today we did have a perfect nine o'clock entry for the pump. Okay. So who knows tomorrow it's usually, you know, we'll do the same thing. Now gold, I did not, um, I did try to short this one earlier. So I had to just stop trading this one. Cause I didn't like how I don't like that pattern. It's just not my favorite pattern. Had already missed because um, we had the initial break of structure here and this was before my time. So that would have been the better trade to take, right? And then, you know, but once it came back here and I took this trade and it started pulling back and, you know, this stuff here takes forever. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> so I cut this trade. I didn't really get do, do very well on this trade at all. The only trade that really worked out for me was the, um, was the Dow. And I was watching the, the the NASDAQ as well to see if this, because it also had a red signal for today. Um, it did not play out as smoothly as I expected. So by the time, um, like this little area right here is where I ended up getting in. Because again, you know, the Mondays, you know, when you have your initial high of week, it makes it so easy, right? So that was the original high for the day. And then we had the... Um, these lower highs that came in. And th this was the level that I was using um, to get in at this particular area right there, which was uh, 845, All right? Not very clean, but you got a little, you're able to take this. I missed this one right at the, the nine o'clock because I was paying attention to uh, the Dow. So I got in it kind of late, right after I entered Dow and you know, right at this level, right? So we're at the level and this thing did not do what I wanted it to do. It started to pull back. So I ended up taking this one off and I was like, you know what? Um, I'm good with the Dow trade, right? So this one was another one that I tried to take short, but I missed the actual high of week trade. I was waiting for it. 
it's funny because I had it marked up. I was like, okay, I'm going to get in this one once it hits that level again, <laughs> because it's just so easy. Right. And so being distracted and then trying to get in this trade, right. When I hit this level, it wasn't, it didn't follow through like I wanted it to. And by the time it did follow through, I was already done trading for the day. And of course we had the news that showed up earlier. So it wasn't, I wasn't really looking to do a whole lot of waiting around because it was Monday because it is a Monday. It's still Monday actually. Um, so this one is showing, you know, um, here's another thing, guys. Let me just make this M30 so we can kind of have a bigger bird's eye view of this. Um, we are seeing here that we did have the failed breakout. We closed. We're long. We have longs in the market. Okay. Um. So this is Friday's high. Just going to extend that out. Maybe it's a little too far out, but I'm just going to push this out some and just kind of leave a little bit of the previous day high level there. I like to see that. Um, so this could be, right, we did... Is this a failed breakout? Is this a peak low, right? I don't know yet, <laughs> okay? But I know that we we still have longs in the market and these levels inside here could come into play. It did break out and then come back inside, right? So this could very well, um, it could do that, right? I don't know, right? It could totally do that tomorrow. Um, as of right now, we can see that we broke the low twice so far, we triggered it, triggered shorts there, triggered shorts here again, and they failed and it failed. So we could definitely look like we're continuing the long. So it'd be interesting to see if uh, Tuesday, we have a range expansion that, you know, goes to the upside um, just by what we're seeing here so far. So that's something I'm going to look at to see if that plays out tomorrow. And of course, looking at the time, the nine o'clock hour, the third hour, right? That is what we're looking for. And um, interestingly enough, ES has already confirmed, which is S&P, has already looked like it's confirming that, yeah, we do still have longs in the market, just like um, the NASDAQ, but the NASDAQ didn't do anything. We had an inside day today. Now, I wasn't even paying attention to the ES today. Um, this could have been better. I was paying attention to gold and NQ to, to be my second trade, which ended up being a flop. And I didn't even have this one up. So I was also looking at RT because sometimes the Russell RTY can also play out really nicely. Um, but it was pumping at the open. And I don't really like getting because that makes me feel like I need to jump in. And I don't I don't want to jump in the trade. Right. We'll look at the Russell. I haven't looked at it since. Right. So but for right now, guys, let's just look. We got we have the breakout here, the Felden breakout on Thursday. We have the inside day and look, it closed below the open. So you're getting the first red vibes or at least a red trade here. And what I have known. Right. We still have, long, you know, the longs are here. Right. Longs is what? Longs close and breakout, close and breakout is going to always equal a dump and pump. Okay. And I wish I would have paid attention to this one because this would definitely have been the second one that I would have taken. <laughs> but again, this was totally later in the session. Um, maybe, I, maybe I'm just talking too much crap right now. But we had our first day here where we broke this level here. Um, and then we were inside. So we don't really count this I don't count it as a day, but it still is three days, right? So technically this trade right here that closed and breakout long for the dump and pump didn't play out on Friday. So of course, you know, we should expect it to, sh to play out today. Um, and this one had, you know, broke, this could, again, it is showing as a day zero. Um, it didn't quite uh, hit this uh, level. Because usually on the day zero, guys, which honestly it is a day zero in the sense where we do have, 
you know, the peak high here and then a peak low there. And that also is a day zero. Most of the times when I see the day zeros as well, um, it would have cleared both of the levels. And I like to see that too. But because this did break the high, break the low and, you know, close back inside, then yeah, I'm definitely putting this on my watch list for tomorrow to see if this is going to play out because obviously this did close above the open. So we look like we do have a, a long trade signal here, but again, it still needs to play out. Okay. So this is definitely on my list for tomorrow to see if it's going to, um, to play out. So I'm going to just make a note here. Um, I'm just going to put day zero. All right. So let's see how that works out tomorrow. Let's go take a look at the Russell. Russell, Russell, Russell. All right. So this one, let's see. Today, I, oh, I did come back in here. I forgot. I must have marked this earlier. Um, I just be marking charts. Sometimes I don't even realize what pair I'm on, on which symbol I'm looking at. Um, but we had definitely had a higher high on Friday. Okay, so we have this peak high here. It closed back inside. It did close above the open. So um, it did dump. Here was the dump. And then the pump right at the open. And again, this was the one that I was not, I saw it start to pump up. But because I hadn't, I was not looking to see what happened the rest of the day. I just had it showing. I just had the chart open. And it started pumping at the open. And I personally, I just, mm, I don't like that. I feel like it's a trap. <laughs> I feel like it's a trap if it's starting to pump that high that much at the open like that. So I just, I just tend to leave it alone. I want it to really set up for me um, for the, you know, for the third hour trade, right? Because you get this gigantic bar. Hold on, let me go to M5. Um, I mean, it was legit trade, obviously, but I was not, I just, for me, I don't, I don't like doing it because I don't want to get, um, I'm not, because honestly, I'm not even oftentimes, unless there was a news event at, let's say at 830 when they normally have news and then here comes 930 opening and that's a whole hour. That's different. Um, but there was no news. Um, that early and I just don't like trading the open just like that although this was a very good trade because it's just been in embedded in me now after watching Stacey Burst videos although he does trade the opens right that's not anything that he does not trade but um, if it doesn't really fit whatever it is that you what you have set up for yourself. So for me, I have not set up for, this is a parabolic trade for sure. Absolutely. We had the dump and then the pump. For me, I just don't like doing it. And I wasn't really prepared to take this trade anyway. I was more so looking at the YM and preparing myself to get into that at nine o'clock. So 10 o'clock. Okay. So guys, I'm in central time. So that's my trading plan. But was it an actual dump and pump for the Monday trade? Absolutely. And did I take it? No. <laughs> um, but it was absolutely a great, a great trade to take at the market open. Okay. Um, so yeah, those are the that's it, really. Um, I don't have anything else right now. So guys, um, you know, I do have this indicator available to you all right? It is, you know, you can put however many symbols that you want to watch. I honestly, you know, I just keep it simple. I'm not trying to um, overcomplicate my eyeballs, trying to see which one I'm going to get into, right? But it definitely helps me at the bird's eye view of where we are in the market. So like I, we already looked at ES and it was showing that we were getting that reset to go long. So again, that's on my list for tomorrow. This one hasn't done anything, but just because it's blank does not mean anything. We just looked at the art at the Russell. So this is right at, um, let me can just click on it from here. <sighs> so this one, um, what happened here? We have an inside day, possible first green day setup, right? That's what I wrote down. 
So we'll see if that actually plays out tomorrow. I got to take a look at the news. I normally have the news written down next to me, but I don't. So I'll take a look at that and see what time news is happening. But here's a clue, guys. Oftentimes, that third hour, boy, that nine o'clock, 10 o'clock Eastern time frame, and sometimes it may not happen right at nine o'clock like it did today. It may happen at 10. Um, but it also it really just depends on what news is happening for the week. So the news is very important. And I'm really, like I said, I'm really loving Mondays um, and I'm really loving to take the trade, especially um, once we have a news event earlier in, in the day, you know, the 830 news, when it comes around 930, 10 o'clock, I'm like ready, <laughs> right? Because everything has set up for me, you know, getting me ready to get into that trade. So yeah, I'm excited about that. So hope you guys have a great trading week. This is just we're going on to the first of the month. So we should see some pretty big moves. I mean, obviously, we're going to we have non-farm coming up, all that fun stuff. Um, so just let this, let's make this money. All right. So that's it for now. We'll see you in the next one.